This was the most requested thing in the comments of the review for this Aorus Gen 4 NVMe SSD, and so since I've now finally got it back in the office to test with, I thought this should be the first thing to check off the list. Now I wasn't quite sure which games I should be testing and so I asked you guys on Twitter and selected three games that I have access to and know how to test and get re reasonably repeatable results. The games that I'm testing here are PUBG, Rainbow Six Siege and Battlefield 5 and the contender that's going up against the ARS SSD is actually this Samsung 960 Pro. Now, it doesn't really matter which NVMe drive I go with here, as you'll soon see in a minute, but this is the Pro drive, which means it's still very fast in the sort of 3 GB per second reads and close enough in write, so that's what I'm going with here. To make sure the results are as reliable as possible, I'm running all of the tests three times, and I'm also testing things in a, as repeatable a manner as possible. So for example, in PUBG, I'm loading the training map and only starting the timer from from when the game actually starts loading, not any of the matchmaking. When it comes to Rainbow Six Siege, I'm loading a solo terrorist hunt and not selecting a spawn location or a character and then just subtracting the full 30 seconds that that takes to you know, get me a, a more accurate time. And when it comes to Battlefield 5, I'm loading the tier allure map or war story and again uh, only measuring from when I click the button to when it's then on screen and the cutscene starts. So what are the results then? Well, let's start off with PUBG as that's the one I was testing first anyway. The differences here are pretty negligible. With the Gen 3 drive across the three runs average, you're looking at 9.87 seconds for it to load the training map versus the Gen 4 drive, which only took 9.56 seconds. There's really barely anything in it. When it comes to Rainbow Six Siege, again, this is also incredibly close. You're looking at 12.61 seconds for the Gen 3 drive and 12.57 for the Gen 4. When it comes to Battlefield 5, there is a slightly bigger margin here, around about half a second, but still nothing major. You're looking at the Gen 3 drive averaging 18.4 or 14 seconds, with the Gen 4 drive doing 17.52, but still basically nothing in it. Okay, so now you know the results, I want to explain a little bit about why they're not that different. Games really don't tend to max out SSDs, especially NVMe drives when loading up. I have a WD SN700 in my PC which is capable of doing a good 3 gigabytes per second in reads and I recorded a task manager while I loaded up PUBG in the training map and the peak that I saw was 40% utilization and around 250 megabytes per second in reads. Like I said, the drive is capable of three gigabytes per second and at 250 uh, megabytes per second, you're looking at you know a standard SATA SSD being very capable of performing that action just fine. And so you really don't need a drive that can do double the SN700s as you really don't make use of the SN700 in the first place. Like I mentioned in the review, most people, especially gamers, won't really see a benefit from these types of drives for a while. Sure, if you're using them in a workstation with the right workloads, then you, you know you can make use of it, awesome, go for it. If you're using it as a, a write cache for a server, maybe, then cool, awesome, nice one. But for the, the average user, it's not really for you right now. Is it cool that they exist and that drives this fast are you know, readily available and I literally have one in my hand? Definitely. Is it cool to know that these aren't even the fastest Gen 4 drives that are at least hypothetically possible? 100%, but... Is it also really useful for anyone beyond, you know, very specific workloads? Not right now. So with all of that said, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think of the Gen 4 drives, especially from a gamer's perspective? I'd also love you to check out the polls up there and let me know if you're planning on picking one of these up or if you're sticking with your standard NVMe or SAT SSD or just not all that interested. You can also hit that subscribe button for more videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. I've actually got the reviewers kit for the Ryzen uh, 9 and 7s back so if you want to see more videos on those do make sure you're subscribed and by the way I was using the Ryzen uh, 9 3900X for testing here with the X570 Masterboard from Gigabytes. 
Uh, and then otherwise, you can also check out links in the description down below to these drives if you want to check out pricing when and where you watch this for both Gen 3 and Gen 4. And there's also a load of other links in the description down below. There's Amazon Overclock UK affiliate links, which don't cost you anything to use, but massively help, help me out when you do use them. Or there's also stuff like Patreon if you want to get cool rewards and support me directly, or merch for hoodies or stuff like this one, or a load of other designs too. There's also stuff like Private Instant Access, which is a great and cheap VPN or Humble Bundle for cheap games to support charities as well. And you can also check out some more videos over there if you want to keep watching. Otherwise, that is pretty much it. I will catch you all guys in the next video.